Hello everyone, uh, today I'm here with a review of uh, one of the matches in the Kalheim Championship that I thought was like very interesting uh, between Arnie Huschenbeck, the eventual, eventual champion, and Javier Dominguez, one of the best players in the world. I actually think Javier played like super bad uh, in this game. Um, maybe I'm just missing something, he's definitely like better than me. So, you know, maybe he will tell me afterwards, oh, this was the reason why I did this, etc, etc. But I just thought it was like an interesting game. So I would like to talk about it. Um, let's look at the... Okay, so so uh, I stopped it here so that we can see how the players sideboard it. Um, Javier boarded out all of his like expensive cards barring the Ox. Which is actually uh, kind of interesting because Arne has his uh, disdainful stroke uh, still in his deck. Um, you can argue that he doesn't know that he boards this way, but he was like boarding this way the day before. And I assume that if you're like in the top four of a pro tour, you at least like have friends or whatever that tell you this is the way he boarded, right? So like the stroke doesn't seem very good. I guess it always counters Obosh, and it's like it's a, it's a companion, and the and the game tends to go pretty long. So like you know eventually you will be able to counter that, but it's does seem kind of weak so that's just like an interesting point another thing that's interesting is that Arnie has um, boarded out one of his lands I think that's probably because he's on a draw and like both players have a bunch of disputes and stuff so you like see a lot of trading for cards going on and he's on a draw so I think it's fine to, to cut the land um, and yeah he also has four crabs which I think is kind of interesting but it's probably fine it, like like his other option is yeah like I don't know negate or the, the the one one I actually think negate might be fine because you know you can counter the the spell spell part of, of adventure creatures and he, and Javier does have a bunch of counters so I actually think that it would be fine but regardless this is the way he they, they board it not necessarily uh, like really going to argue against that because they probably play infinite forest tournament you know and these 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 decks are obviously tier one decks so you, they probably like know what they're doing with their sideboard let's get into the game um, yeah. Javier is considering uh, whether he should like have the third borrower over 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 the Soviet coming. Well, I, I I think the third borrower would be better, but like I don't like low confidence. It's it's just like hard to know. Um, I don't want to fast forward it because it's just gonna be there like immediately and it's let's see okay. <clears throat> I'm actually not gonna. This is the game where Arne goes uh, like like the double drowning lock, creating the the card on the stack, and then he clings to does the ox. But I actually, obviously, that's like a very fun play, and a lot of people wouldn't see it. But once you see it, it's like obvious, right? There's like no decision. Um. So I actually think that with with, with players that are as strong as these two, like that player wasn't actually like what is interesting about this game. Um, you know, if you're like a weaker player, you don't see these plays and you're like, wow, he's a pro, he like saw that, but, um, that's basically like a forced play. Once you, if you like think about it, you, that's like, you know, an obvious play, whereas a lot of the, like, like the actual hard decisions, at least what I think are like the ones where, you know, you have like three really good options and you have to like figure out like based on what he played before he might have this and because of that this is better and it like gives me a chance to draw this or whatever um so this is the line you should take but you just like you know from from maybe the viewer's perspective he just like played a giant seemed pretty good maybe like didn't seem that impressive but maybe that was like the hardest decision of the match um whereas this one was kind of like you know kind of obvious once you actually see it so I'm not actually gonna go there because at that point I think the game is over already so it's not really that interesting so like there's a first de decision on turn one right Javier decides to play this Trium and for the most part you do want to play Trium I think that even if you have like three spells uh, for lands you do want to play the Trium because you know you do have Obosh you do have you know, you, you can use your mana with, 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 with a, lot of, a lot of your cards, but like what's different about this hand is that he has specifically these three cards. They are all like one mana cards. The Sentinel even gives you mana and you don't actually lose that much for 
hold and like try it in your hand, right? You can just like play the Sentinel turn one or whatever. And then if you if 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 you if you draw a spell, you can just play the Triumph on turn two. And if you draw a land, then you can actually cycle it. Like if you draw a land, you definitely don't want to play this, right? So like I think that the the upside of waiting one turn or like maybe even two turns, uh, definitely matters a lot. Like you just ha you just down a card for the entire in for the entire game from now from from this point on. If you draw, if if you have lands on uh, top of a library, like there are obviously draws that can potentially screw you by not playing the Triumph, but I think overall it's probably better to wait. And as we see, he drew a land. Like I think that with this island, he would definitely, uh, you know, keep that Triumph in his hand. So, uh, one argument against that is that you know Javier's main game plan post board is Ox, and you need you do need a bunch of red mana for Ox, and like you know he he does have the Sentinel. But you know, it, it basically is only red source, so that might be the reason why he did that. But I just still think that you know having an extra card would maybe better. But I'm not like hundred percent about that. So he does play uh, Sentinel. Obviously, he doesn't play the Innkeeper. He can just die. He doesn't draw a card. Uh, Arne doesn't play the his black creature here, which I actually really like. The reason is that he, he cannot even really attack with it into the Sentinel, and it, it, it just exposes it to uh, Bone Crusher Giant. So I think it makes sense to not play it there. As we see, he, he drew the stroke and you know, it's... Okay, so now uh, it, it's kind of bad. So here is another decision point where I think Javier made a mistake. Um, so this turn, um, he just plays a land, attacks and keeps up dispute for potential thief. Um, but he could have returned Obosh. He actually, in one of the later turns, he kind of awkwardly returns Obosh to his hand instead of playing a Mammoth. Um, so it was like a huge, it was actually a cost that he didn't do it on this turn. Like, it does matter, right? Like, a lot of the time you would think that, well, the companion is just like an additional value. It doesn't necessarily really matter that much, but he did already draw a bunch of lands. Um, you know, this game is probably gonna get to a point where he's gonna cast it. So you just like getting a Black Lotus, extra free mana for that, you know, future turn or whatever. And the downside is that you cannot dispute if he does have Thief, which I'm not even sure you would wanna dispute the Thief. You can just like not attack with the Sentinel and block it. I guess like him milling you is kinda like annoying but like, it's not that big of a deal. The dispute is still gonna be like good for like his counter or into the story at some point anyway. I'm not even sure you would necessarily want to counter a thief, but he also needs to have it. And you know, the, the worst case scenario, like he doesn't have it and you don't like use your mana and re don't return your obosh, I think it's pretty bad. Um, so I just don't really disagree. I just don't really agree with that play. And like post board, like him milling you, it's not necessarily bad for you. That that bad because you you do have the ox. So I don't know. I just I just don't like it. Obviously, like looks kind of weak to just return Obosh and not do anything. But I just think it was the better play. So yeah, Arnest still not playing that one one. Um, he could have. He he actually could. Have, there, there was a decision point for him as well. He could have played the. I, 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 Awakening, but because he has like a bunch of lands, you know, eventually it might uh, come down to that. So I think it's fine. So Javier drew a second innkeeper, which like might seem weak, but you know, it's I think it's actually pretty good draw. Like eventually he's gonna draw the 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 adventure creature, and it's just like very powerful. So this turn, I think he passes again and doesn't return Obosh again. Uh, the reason for that is, you know, if, if Arne goes uh, Thief and it does have a Dispute, he can go like Dispute and pay for Arne's Dispute. But once again, like he didn't play last turn, even if he does have it, like, it, like you can just block it with his 1-2. It's not like... <laughs> I mean, I don't understand. Th th there might be like something that I'm missing, I'm not really sure. Okay, so Javier draws the adventure creature, which is obviously what he what he wants to draw. And I think he makes a mistake again. <laughs> so he plays this innkeeper, right? And Arnie obviously uh, scatters it. 
like that's the best answer you can have for innkeeper because even if you have the adventure creature well you just counter the innkeeper so they don't draw the extra card but javier decides to not fight with dispute and i just don't really get that like i understand that you know it's nice to dispute uh and into the story at some point but like javier has like zero cards in his graveyard and like this innkeeper is just like why wouldn't you want to fight over it it's gonna immediately draw you a card you draw two additional cards and you're like gonna see an extra card of your on your draw step you know you're kind of likely to draw another adventure creature and then it just like gives you another value and you know he kind of still like has to kill like one of the innkeepers and like if he, if he doesn't it's just gonna snowball into another adventure creatures and just gonna draw more and more and more more and more, more cards it just seems like this card is super powerful and like what is your dispute doing anyway like I understand that it's like awesome to counter dispute, but uh, into the story, but like the rogue stick does, doesn't even play the low mage. I don't know what it's called, like the the mind control thing anymore. Like I think this is like a really good turn for you to do that. Uh, I think Javier eventually uses it to counter like the thief. I I, I think if he just like counter the scatter here, he would have like extra two or three cards this game, and he would have easily won. But as it is, um, you know. He didn't counter it, so looks. I mean, it looks pretty bad for Arnie anyway. He, do, he doesn't really have that much going on, you know. So, and as you see at this point, it would be nice to have the Oboshi hand, right? So Javier draws another adventure creature. So had he had he countered, that would be pretty good. So Arnie had a decision point between. Just playing the thief and uh, drawing card with cling to dust. Um, I, it's probably better to just play the thief first. You know, it, it, you might melt the ox and then it's like super awkward. So you can just use the cling on, on his turn. I think that's fine. Just imagine that if Javier had like an extra card from cycling, obosh in hand, extra card from the innkeeper innkeeper in play like i don't know <laughs> but uh, but e e even you know through through all of that like it still looks like he's gonna win right like arne doesn't really have good options i think he just ends up uh returning lurus this turn not sure if i remember correctly because he's kind of like, you know, he can, he, he can just like chomp and then like start returning the guy, eventually like mill Javier and maybe like get somewhere. So, you know, he doesn't really have any other options. Maybe, maybe, maybe he can like draw with Clink first. Um, but, you know, that doesn't allow him to, to sit on the stroke. And, you know, because he kept it in his deck, he probably thinks that Javier still has like maybe some great hinges or dragons. So, you know, those are scary cards. It makes sense that he want to keep the stroke up. And he can just draw a card in of turn if he wants to. So, okay, here's another turn where I think Javier um, makes a mistake. So he attacks with this, um, with his uh, Bone Crusher Giant. He doesn't actually attack with the, he doesn't attack with the Sentinel, which I guess I guess I guess that's fine because it allows him to like use one of his like free mana cards and then go borrow over and still have disputes. Okay, that's fine. So he attacks, he takes four, and he like doesn't play this mammoth here, and he, instead he just returns Obosh. Well, first of all, the Obosh should already be in hand, but why wouldn't you like play this creature out? Like I just don't understand. First of all, he can have a stroke, but like you know maybe Javier just assumed that he brought it out. That, I mean that's not really a big argument, but. Like, Arne kind of has to kill your creatures anyway, so it doesn't really make that big of a difference whether you have Obosh in play or Mammot. Obviously, it's better to have Obosh. But, like, you're playing against deck with, like, Heartless Axe, Counter Spells and stuff. Uh, and, you know, this is, like, a pretty good turn to just, like, press your advantage, right? Like, Arne has a bunch of cards. He doesn't really have that, you know, mana to deploy all of it. He has, like, Lurus into the stories. Uh, 
you're winning by tempo you're like want to press your advantage right you just like want to put creatures on into play and like kill him before he can like do everything so i just don't really understand like not playing the mammoth here and just returning the obush it's just like i don't i don't get it i don't get it man i don't if verstehe nicht so you know he's thinking about it there might be a reason uh, i mean i don't know I mean, the Obosh is nice with uh, Borover because it flies, you know, so you can attack for a lot of damage. But it's like, that's just assuming everything kind of go goes your, your way. And if that's like happening, you're kind of winning anyway. But Mammoth is just like better against most of cards that aren't a good have in his hand, right? I think. So yeah, Arnold draws a card, like... Obviously, the Klink is in his deck in order to, to exile Ox, but he like recognizes that he's like pretty far behind and he needs to like find some cards to like stop this beat down. So, you know, that obviously it makes sense to do that. Oh. Uh, I don't I don't think we can there is any way to see that scry so I, I cannot talk about it maybe maybe I don't, I don't know I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it is visible to us oh it's an into the story okay did he top an into the story he already oh. that's well if he put into the story on the top well I don't really understand that either like that's probably assuming that you think that your first one's gonna get countered and but like you have so many cards in your hand already. You have the uh, Cling to Dust as well. You have Lurus. You have Agit. You know the Awakening. I don't really understand. But maybe, maybe I'm just missing. Like maybe, you know, there's an interior story on top of his library, right? I mean, I don't really uh, get it. So the stroke is actually pretty good this turn because it does uh, gets to counter the the Obosh. But just imagine that there was like a Mammoth in play, right? I guess Arnie would like have more mana this turn because he wouldn't necessarily have to use a stroke you know uh, Javier would have to pay additional free to put it in his hand this turn um, and yeah so now the dispute counters at Forcer which is obviously good this turn because you know it, it, it prevents the, the, the other one from having that touch but I just think that if innkeeper was in play you know Javier would have two additional cards and that would be a lot better and he would just play like play mammoth instead of the dispute this turn or like something that he would have drawn so yeah it seems like arne did put in into the story on top i mean for you know it's the best card in your deck but i just think that in the position it doesn't really make sense like it's not what he's like looking for he's just like behind and he's to like you know get back his tempo with like drowning the log heartless act or whatever uh, maybe he just thought it was better than like a random draw because if the you know the game might play out like he doesn't didn't necessarily know that Javier does have borrower and he's gonna be like under so much pressure but it is like kind of likely but maybe in like scenario where he doesn't and he's just like sitting on counters uh it was like a better than a random draw in case the first one gets countered or something but i just don't really like that in general um yeah So, you know, I, I thought actually that, you know, maybe it's not looking as good for Javier because now he can just like get back this thief. But what ends up happening is that uh, Javier doesn't soul here this Lurus. I think there, like, there are two options, right? The first one is that he didn't realize that if he, if he upkeep kills the Lurus, he can actually get it back, which I actually think is what happened, even though he might not like admit that because he did have like a stop in upkeep for a second. Uh, but like the rational reason is that you know Javier just like assuming that he has drowned in a lock or like negate or something and if that uh, exchange is going to happen anyway then you know I might as well do it on his turn so that he taps too but I, like I just don't really like that obviously if he d has those cards it's like oh it sucks but the potential upside with like him not having it, it, it like if he doesn't have it you have extra creature right because you passing means that he like returns to death that creature that can block like one of your creatures. That's like really bad for you. I don't really get it. 
get it. Also, if he, if he does the drowning, drowning log, he might just like kill your boar over here. Um, like probably not, but maybe. Um, I don't know. You know, maybe Javier is like thinking that you know, if he if he if he, if he, if he has the drowning log. Then it's obviously better to pass because it forces him to use it on his turn and if he doesn't he's gonna be like far ahead enough that you know him uh him having the extra thief like won't end up mattering um i'm not necessarily saying this is like wrong there are like other points in the game where i'm like pretty sure but this potentially might be okay but it definitely looks really really bad because you know uh, arnie just doesn't have it doesn't have the, the answer Yeah, so like, you know, as you can see, he has the stop on upkeep and now he like realizes, uh, you know, this thief just like came here that he can cast them and he's like, oh shit. But that's what I think that happened, but maybe not. Um, Javier just like draws the land here uh, and, you know, Arnie is able to stabilize and then eventually he wins with that with that awesome play with two drowning locks and a cling to dust uh, it's it's not really that interesting from this point at, at least for me so i'm just gonna stop the video here i just thought it was very really interesting maybe i'm like missing uh you know reasons why people did what they did uh let me know if you if you if, if you think that what i'm saying is nonsense uh if you like the video please click on the like and subscribe button and see you with uh with the next video i guess bye bye